brothers and sisters, we are very fortunate indeed today to have a meet Sheikh Al-Madina. Sheikh Al-Madina, through whose teachings and guidance, many millions of Muslims throughout the world are now better Muslims. And through whose teachings and guidance, tens of thousands of non-Muslims, by the grace and mercy of Allah, have embraced Islam. <coughs> Sheikh Ahmad Didan, Muslim scholar of the Christian Bible, unique in style, <coughs> an intellectual giant, head and shoulder above the others, not only in the world of Islam, but in the world of religions. Brothers and sisters, I would like you to welcome him with a loud takbir. Takbir! 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 قال الله تعالى في شأن حبيبه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولا تجدن أقربهم مودة للذين آمنوا الذين قالوا إن نصارى ذلك بأن منهم كسيسين ورهبانا وأنهم لا يستكبرون صدق الله صدق الله العظيم ما يا برادر This is a unique occasion It reminds me of the event 1400 years ago in Medina in Medina Munawwara in the mosque of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a Christian deputation had come from Najran you remember that from Najran and they had a discussion. The Christians and our Nabiya Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a discussion for three days and three nights. And when Sunday came, our Nabiya Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so tolerant, he, he offered his masjid and Nabawi for the Christians to offer their prayers. This is how our tolerant our Nabiya Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. And this is the example he set us. And the masjid is the best place where you can deliver the message of Islam. Now, I will explain to you, you know, how we in South Africa, we talk to visitors. We have a masjid in the center of the city of Durban, which attracts thousands of visitors, tourists, church groups, school groups, and they come along and our people, they welcome them with open hearts. Because it's an opportunity for them to be educated, to know what we believe, how we believe and what we do and why we do what we do. So it, it's education and it opens our hearts and minds. But now, at the beginning of this talk of mine, I read to you an ayah from the Holy Quran. From Surah Maida. Surah Maida from the Holy Quran. And I'm suggesting to my brothers and sisters that when anybody any time gives you a reference from the Holy Quran, make a point of going home and checking up that reference. Not that you are doubting the speaker, that our sheikhs and our imams are trying to deceive us. No, no. But from the point of view that if you go home and check up that reference in your Quran at home, in your translation, and you confirm what you have heard, when you see that ayah with your eyes and you read it with your heart and mind, that ayah, that knowledge will become a part of your own property and you in turn will be able to share with others. From that point of view, I recommend that each and every one of you, you have a Quran at home, a translation, avail yourself of the opportunity of checking that. I said, Maida. How do we find Maida in an encyclopedia of the size? This Quran here is about 2,000 pages with Arabic text, translation and commentary. And the Qur'an consists of 114 surahs. Maida is only one of them. How can you find that surah in the Qur'an? The first person to give you the right answer, he gets this book, this choice. 
<laughs> you didn't give anybody a chance. But no, my dear. <laughs> you go to the index. In this Quran here by Abdullah Yusuf Ali, there is a very comprehensive index at the back. Anything you want to know, you go to the index. You want to know about marriage, marriage in Islam and the end. Just like a dictionary and the end, everything about marriage. With whom you can and with whom you can't. How many, how many, how many? Go to the index, marriage. You want to know about divorce and the D. You want to know about heaven and hell and the H. We are living in this Christian country and the people want to know your Quran, what has it got to say about my Jesus? So what do you do? What do you do? Go to the index and in the J you'll find everything about Jesus. Well, you want to know? First item you see in this book here. He's a righteous prophet. He's a true prophet of God. Second item, his birth, described in two places. He's apostle to Israel. He's not God. He's not the son of God. He was not crucified. He prophesied the coming of Ahmad, everything on your fingertips. So you need a translation like this. If you haven't got it, you need it. Each and every one of you in this country, you need an English translation. If you understand Urdu better than any other language, by all means, consult the Urdu translation. If you understand Gujarati better than any other language, get that Gujarati translation. They are available. You can get a Gujarati translation as well. But in this environment, English is imperative. Because we are living in this environment, you have to talk to people, and what are you going to talk? Maybe you are an Arab, and you know Arabic, and you understand the Quran direct. But still you will have difficulties when explaining to the non-Muslim. Between you and Allah, there would be no problem. You understand what Allah is saying? But now to convey that message to the non-Muslim, you will not be able to use the pro appropriate words, terminology, and you can make a hash of it. So therefore, even you, the Arabs, those who understand Arabic, you still need a translation. That's my advice. Now in the ayah I read to you, in Surah Maida, chapter 5, in, under M, we'll look for Maida, it says 5, easy to find because every page is numbered. And I say ayah number 85, easy to find because every ayah, verse is numbered. Allah says, وَلَتَجِدَنَّ أَقْرَبَهُمْ مَوَدَّةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَلَّذِينَ قَوِمْنَا نَصَارَ It says, nearest in, in love to the believers in the Muslims. Nearest to the believers in love to the Muslims will thou find those who say, we are Christians. Because among them there are people, men devoted to learning. What of Banu and those who have renounced the world? And they are not arrogant. This is chapter 5, ayah number 85 of the Quran. Every Quran has that ayah. That these people. Among them, among the Christians, you will find people who are devoted to learning. And these Christians, they appreciate Muslim virtues. And our commentator, the translator, he, trans he gives us further explanation, Abdullah Yusuf Ali, about these Christians that we are talking about, the Quran talks about. He says here, the meaning is not that they merely call themselves Christians, filling up census forms, you know, taking up Christian, 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 mm -hmm. not that type. Not merely that they say they are Christians, but they are such sincere Christians that they appreciate Muslim virtues. They see your behavior, your standards, your culture, and they might not want to follow it, but they say, no, I can see you people have a point. You know, no alcohol, no gambling, no promiscuous relationship. You don't dance with other people's wives and daughters. No, he will argue and debate with you, but he says, no, I can see you people are good people. You people are good people. See, those, there are people who will say that, no, you people are good people. But you haven't got salvation. That's another topic. You see? But you, know, you people are good. <laughs> Look, you pray five times a day. They find hard, hard on a Sunday. Once a week they find it difficult. But five times a day the Muslims gather, you know, and, and he's going through an ordeal. One whole month he fasts. Before sunrise to sunset, no sip of water, no food, nothing, no sniffing, no smoking. No, no. He said, you are a fantastic people. You people are. 
they appreciate Muslim virtues. Muslim virtues. As did the Abyssinians to whom Muslim refugees went during the persecution in Mecca. They would say, it is true we are Christians, but we understand your point of view and we know you are good men. Yusuf Ali says, they are Muslims at heart, whatever their label may be. When they say that, at heart they are Muslims. They can carry on, I'm a Jehovah's Witness, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, I'm an Anglican, Presbyterian, Lutheran. Whatever the labels, if they have that type of behavior, attitude towards Muslims, they are Muslims as hard, but with the wrong label. <laughs> so now, I find these good people. They said, among them, Allah says, there are men devoted to learning. So let's find some of these. That's not the topic. But since we started with it, let us have a brief look. In 1776, not 1976, 1776. Edward Gibbon, a great historian, he wrote his encyclopedias on the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. The decline and fall of the Roman Empire in 1776. And in his encyclopedia, he says, this is Edward Gibbon, he says, the creed of Muhammad means the principles, the teachings of Muhammad, is free from the suspicions of ambiguity. And the Quran is a glorious testimony to the unity of God. Who's saying this? A Christian. The Quran is a glorious testimony to the unity of God. And there's no ambiguity in it. Ambiguity is to say things with double meaning. You are saying things, but with double meaning. I'm in the mood to give some books away. <laughs> Here is a reproduction, reproduction from the Time magazine. You know Time magazine? It's world class magazine. In production and in the language of, as a literature, piece of literature, the English is really super. Time magazine. I think it's, uh, it's printed in America. But in your tennis, they also may be in Britain. In the Time magazine, there is an article here. And the title of the article is, When Dad is a Father. You could understand English? When Dad is a Father. Anybody, even our visitors, if they can explain to you, what is, what kind of language is? When Dad is a Father. It's ambiguous. Can you see it's ambiguous? Making it, when Dad is a Father. What? What does it mean? Anybody? This book. Come, 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 come now. <laughs> he was very quick in saying, in that, in that. Yes, my brother, you. You got it. He's got it. He said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what it means is, when dad is a father, father means the father of the church. See, he's a priest. When he fathers a bastard child, which you people call love child. You know you call it a bastard child, what do you call it? Love child. Haram Zada Bacha ko kya 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 love child. My child is my child of my love, Allah. You know, I love my children. They are, you know, but now they, they use that beautiful thing for a bastard child. When you have fathered a child out of marriage, which is a bastard, what do they call it? Love child. Hmm? Sodomites and homosexuals, what do they call them? Yes. Beautiful word. They prostitute for, for bloody rubbish. You know, th this is the, that's the culture. So this one here says, when dad is a father, he shows a Roman Catholic priest, he had been having sex for so many years with, with a, a sister or a nun, and <coughs> we got bastard child. So he says, when dad is a father, and when dad is a priest, that word father then is a priest. Ambiguous. Now the Quran is free from the suspicions of ambiguity. There's no mixing up. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say, he is Allah the one and only. No mistake, no misunderstanding whatsoever. You can't have misunderstanding. You can't say the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God, but there are not three gods but one God. What are you talking? What are you talking? Listen, <laughs> the Father is Almighty, the Son is Almighty, and the Holy Ghost is Almighty, but there are not three Almighties but one Almighty. See, ambiguous. 
the Father is a person, the Son is a person, and the Holy Ghost is a person, but they are not three persons, but one person. See, ambiguity. Ambiguity. What are you talking about? Person, 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 but not three persons, but one person. Isn't that what are you talking about? See? Confusing. Nothing like that in the Quran. Who says that? Edward Gibbon. In 1776, this is what he said. So Allah says, among them there are people devoted to learning. Among them also, here, yeah, Samuel Zwemer. He is the head of the Zwemer Institute in Pasadena, America. He specializes on the Muslim world, wanting to convert the Muslims to Christianity. That's his body. Samuel Zwemer. He is one of the greatest Christian missionaries you know, of the 19th century and now maybe 20th century. He says, no religion is higher than its concept of God. The height, the level of your religion depends upon your concept. What do you think about that? If you think Allah, God Almighty is like a totem pole, that's the level of your religion. If you think your God Almighty is like a monkey, that's the level of your religion. He is an elephant, that's the level of your, or is a snake, that's the level of your religion. Whatever your concept of God is the level of your religion. He's assuming that his is the highest. Otherwise he would not utter those words. At the back of his mind, Christianity is a Christian, is the highest that you can think of God. So he expounds that. This is, you know, he is highest, not this oriental religion, oriental meaning Buddhism, Hinduism, Islamism. So no, 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 these are all oriental religions. This is the highest concept, therefore he makes such a pronouncement. But now, His Holiness the Pope, you know His Holiness the Pope, Baba, Baba, Baba the Pope. He has just published a book called Crossing the Threshold of Hope. Crossing the Threshold of Hope by His Holiness John Paul II. How many of you own this book? Please put up your hand. How many? Please put up your hand. Not one. And there are two reasons why, why we are not likely to have this book. Two reasons. I will give you one. I'll give you one. I'll help you. One is the price. <laughs> no, 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 no joke, no joke. This book costs you nine pounds ninety-nine pence. If you gave a ten pound note, you would get this one penny. If you got the patience to wait, you'll get one penny change. Actually ten pounds for 244 pages. Hmm? You are not likely to buy it because it's very, very expensive. Too expensive. 244 pages for ten pounds. When I'm offering my Muslim brothers and sisters this book here, the choice. The choice between Islam and Christianity. Hardcover. Gold embossed, South African gold, paper inside, silk paper. No, no. I'm offering to my brothers and sisters, I said, five pounds, you buy one, you get one free. That's for tonight. You buy one for five pounds, five pounds, you buy one, not ten pounds. This is far superior to anything that the Pope and the Roman Catholic Church has produced. Look at, look at it, man, just look at it. Look at the difference. <laughs> this is ten pounds, this is five pounds. But with this five pounds, you get one book free. You get two for five pounds. But the Muslim finds it expensive. <laughs> so I said, look, I'll give you one reason, two reasons why a Muslim was not likely to have this book. One was, it's very expensive. And the second reason you give me, there's another book. No? No? We don't read. That's close. We don't read. We are not a reading people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first word of wahi he gives our Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is ikra. Read for who? And we are a people who say la ikra. How many for No, no, we don't say that. Because if you say that, it is kufar. Allah says, read this, I won't read, you are kafir. So we don't say that. But in our behavior, we are a Lycra community. We are the people who don't read. You said that? That's yours. <laughs> now, in this book, His Holiness the Pope, he says some beautiful things. He also had side stripes at us. You know, he says something nice and he gives you a kick in the face. <laughs> but that's his nature. He is a master psychologist. He is. 
I have studied him. I haven't got the time to go deep into that. I have studied him. But in this book of his, on page 92, he says, some of the most beautiful names in the human language are given to the God of the Quran. Some of the most beautiful names in the human language are given to the God of the Quran. There's nothing like it in his Bible, in the Vedas, in the Bhagavad Gita, in the Ramayana, there in the literature, religious literature of the world, there is nothing to compare with the name that the Quran gives Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's who says? The enemy says that. Coming from the enemy is worth a million. I can say that, you can say that. No, no, we did to him, our alim say that, and we say yes, 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 we agree. But now it's coming from the enemy, the arch enemy of Islam, who's out to convert us all to Christianity. He's saying some of the most beautiful names in the human language are given to the God of the Quran. Maybe he read the Quran. Or maybe somebody told him. And he's only confirming, I'll give you a brief, brief sample of what he's thinking about. Allah says, he is Allah, besides whom there is no other God. Al Malik, the King. Al Quddus, the Holy One. As Salam, the source of peace and perfection. Al Mu'min, the guardian of faith. Al Muhaymin, the preserver of safety. Al Aziz, the exalted in might. Al Jabbar, the irresistible. Al Mutakabir, the Supreme. He is the creator, Al-Bari, the evolver, Al-Muthawwir, the bestower of forms and colors. Lahul Asmaul Husna. His are the most beautiful names. Allah says that. And His Holiness the Pope confirms it. Some of the most beautiful names in the human language are given to the God of the Quran. I said, now you have to buy the book. <laughs> no, I'm not selling it. I don't, get, I don't get a commission. Not on that one, not on this. I don't get a commission. But no, those of us, you know, who has that, that, that spirit to memorize some of these beautiful expressions is an opening the door. See, every time you meet a Christian, he says, you know, what your Pope, well, maybe you are a protestant, you don't believe in the Pope. The Catholics believe he's infallible, he doesn't make a mistake. That he is the mouthpiece of Jesus Christ, the second person of the Trinity, the second God. First is God the Father, God the Son. He is the Khalifa of God the Son. Whatever God the Son tells him, he articulates. He is the mouthpiece of God the Son, Jesus. They call him the Vicar of Christ, means the Khalifa of Jesus on earth. Say, so look, this Khalifa of yours, you don't accept him. Say, but now, man, look, 900 million people believe him. They follow him. They accept him as infallible. He never makes a mistake. Everything he says is from God. No mistake. He never makes a mistake. No pope makes a mistake. They are infallible. That's what they believe. That's their akida about the pope. He never makes a mistake. Because he's the mouthpiece of Jesus Christ. I said, look, this man says that some of the most beautiful names in the human language are given to the God of the Quran. True or false? The, the, he said, that give him the proof. He said, this is what the Quran says. Is there anything like that in your book? Has it. So, you see, this is, we must create opportunities to deliver the message. Some of That quotation, I don't know whether you people got these pamphlets of mine. They were supposed to be given out in my meetings. This chapter, reproduced from the book, the whole chapter. It was given meeting in Birmingham. In the town hall, it was given to everybody. Everybody had this. There's a the whole chapter, four pages on Islam. So these are the quotations you memorize and you use. Create an opportunity of delivering the message. Now coming to the masjid, coming back to our masjid, the scene that we have enjoying at the moment, with our Christian brother, our fellow countrymen. I would welcome them, if you allow me. I'm your guest, and they are our guests. Mine's and yours. 
I would say to you, allow me to welcome you all with the traditional Islamic salutation of wishing you all Assalamu Alaikum. Which means peace be unto you all. You see, we Muslims, when we meet one another, we wish one another Assalamu Alaikum, peace be unto you, and the hero replies Wa Alaikum Assalam, and on you also be peace. So with that salutation, I welcome you all, Muslim and non-Muslims, with the Islamic salutation of saying, Assalamu Alaikum. I'm telling my non-Muslim visitors in the masjid when they come. I said, the very first thing that you did when you entered this house of prayer was to take off your shoes. Now, we are not discriminating against you because you are not Muslim. So take off your shoes. No, 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 no. You see, we also take off our shoes when we enter the house of prayer. So we are not discriminating. We are not victimizing you because you are not Muslim, take off your shoes. No, no, We also take off our shoes when we enter the house of prayer. We do this in respect of the commandment given by God Almighty to the Holy Prophet Moses. In the book of Exodus, the second book of the Bible, it is written that when Moses was on Mount Sinai, God spoke to him and he said, Draw not my hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where understandest is holy ground. In respect of that commandment, we Muslims, we take off our shoes. Nothing new. We are not teaching anything new. Whatever God commanded your prophet in your own book to do, we are doing it. Can the guy fight you? Can he, can he take exception? I said, look, we are doing what God commanded your prophet to do in your own book, the Bible. Instead of telling the old-fashioned way, my father used to do. I said, you people, with these shoes you go to the toilet, to the WC, and the same shoes you go to the church. You've got no respect for the house of God, but we are a nice, clean people. No, no, that is true. <laughs> but we are trading offense. Rather, he said, no, we are doing what is in your book, God's commandment to your prophets, we are fulfilling that. Before we come into prayer, now in our masjid there, we have a pool, we call it a house, house, we call it house, pool, ornamental pool. And around the pool are seats and taps for wudu. So we stand on one of the seats and the people all gather around the visitors, the tourists. I said, you see, before we go in for prayer, we make ablution. Wudu, wudu. So all the exposed parts of the body are being washed. When we get visitors, we must do the same. Tell them, please take off your shoes. Then tell them why. Because it's an inconvenience. You know that? But they don't mind. You know why? Because they think they might see something nice and funny. You know, they might see them, your monkey god and your elephant god and your snake god. I'm telling you. Because they, visitors, they come along to our masjid and they ask, they look around, they say nothing there. They say, where are your, where are your gods? Where are your gods? Means your idols and images. So you say, look, we have no idols and images here. They said, we only take them out on Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> they heard something about Fridays. It's a holy day. I said, no, not even on Fridays. We hate them, we abhor them. But they can't believe. Because when they look at me in my country, I'm an Indian. I look like an Indian. In my country, automatically says, the guy's an Indian. No, 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 I'm an Indian. And most of the people who are working with us, they look like me. They look like Indians. And because the majority of the Indians in South Africa are Hindus, and the majority of the Indians in India are Hindus, the overwhelming impression is every Indian is a Hindu. No, 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 no. It's a natural thing. See, you look like an Indian? You say, yeah. You don't look like an Arab? <laughs> he said, you're a Hindu, in his mind. You're worshipping the cow god, the monkey god, the elephant god, the snake god. He said, no, I'm a Muslim. So I said, maybe you're worshipping Muhammad god. So he said, look, you want to see the statue of your Muhammad god. He said, no, we have nothing like that here. We worship the unseen god of the universe. I'm like, I can't believe. How can you worship an unseen thing? You must see something. You must see. picture something, visualize something. What a wonderful opportunity of brainwashing the people against all the misconceptions they have. So, I said, before we go in, we make ablution. There are three good reasons I can think of. The learned man can give you a dozen. I can give you three. Number one, purely from the hygienic point of view, no one is going to find fault with the person who washes himself five times a day. It's a good hygienic practice. And the guys agree. 
Five times a day, the man is washing his hands, his face, then his nostrils, the nape of the neck, gagging the mouth, brushing the teeth. Man, it's a fantastic, wonderful hygienic practice. And the guy agrees that it is a good hygienic practice. Secondly, I say it serves certain psychological purposes, meaning mentally it's preparing us for salat, for prayer. We are washing not because we are dirty. You might have just had a shower. But no, we are going through that process, and when we go through the process, man, the beauties, the fantastic things that happen. Number one, in the middle of the day, if you came for Zohar, when you go make wudu, what is happening? Pool water. Your hands, your feet, your face, the tempo of your heartbeat is slowed down. Man, you are doing the fantastic favor to yourself. Forget everything else. Forget the spiritual blessings. Physically, you can't do yourself a better turn, turn, a better favor than this. Take off your shoes. There are no ending. The pressure is reduced. Sit down and wash yourself with cool water. Tempo of your heartbeat is slowed down. Hmm? Now, psychology is preparing you for salah, and you come and stand, that you're going to stand before the Almighty. Mm -hmm. And even, I'm telling that, even if the man is thinking while making salah, what his wife is cooking at home, even then, he's doing himself the greatest favor. These great Western psychologists, great positive thinkers like Dale Carnegie, he says in his book that everybody in the middle of the day, must take up ten minutes for peaceful fight and contemplation. Let's go off in a nook of your, of your house, somewhere in some corner of your room, and go and sit down there and do nothing. That's what he advises. And everybody agrees. It's a fantastic thing if you can take a break. Because we are all involved in a rat race. We can't let the telephone go, the telephone won't let us go, until the psychiatrist tells us you need compulsory rest. I say, why wait for that? Allah's agent, the Mu'azzin, is calling us, Hayya ala salat, hayya ala salat. He says, come to prayer, come to prayer. Hayya ala falah, hayya ala falah. So come to success, come to success. That this is the real success. That you remind yourselves about your duties and obligations towards your creator and your duties and obligations towards your fellow human beings. If you want to be successful, there is no other way. You are having a break. Having a break. On your own senses, you know, you agree with Dale Carnegie that it's a good thing to take up 10 minutes, but you say you can't afford it. But, and Allah's command says, Allah says, it's perfect. Go, come on. Compulsory pray. And thirdly, this is also another commandment given by God Almighty to the Holy Prophet Moses. He says in the Bible, and Moses and Aaron and their sons, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, Hazrat Harun alayhi salam, and their children washed their hands and the feet thereat. When they went into the tent of the congregation in Jamaat Khan, they washed as the Lord commanded Moses. So we Muslims are still fulfilling another biblical commandment. Though we haven't got the label of a Jew, nor yet that of a Christian, yet in all humility we claim we are more Jewish than the Jews and more Christians than the Christians. In this, that we are trying to follow in the footsteps of the prophets. That's all. We are not angels. We also have our black sheep. And some of us can beat the Christian and the Hindus, you know, in evil. But we are not claiming to be angels. But in my country, if you come for Zohar time, you find a thousand people. Any day, middle of the week, middle of the day, a thousand people there. When in the cathedral next door, the Roman Catholic cathedral, they can't get 750 people on a Sunday. I'm talking about daily, daily. Zohar time, a thousand people there. On Fridays, no space. Four thousand people in our masjid. Four thousand for Juma. And when they see this, they marvel, say, how? Don't you people have anything else to do in life? <laughs> said, no. We also have to sweat for our bread. Well, no, we have to. Maybe we have to sweat more than the white man. But Allah's command says, Hayyala Salah, Hayyala Salah, Fala, He says, come to success. Come to success. And we have Alhamdulillah. Right. So, then when they come inside the house of prayer, just invite them. Your neighbors. Invite them home for a cup of tea. Invite them home for a cup of tea. Your teas and your bhajiyas and samosas, you don't know what they can do. <laughs> there is no better way to get to the heart of a man than through his stomach. <laughs> Does a psychologist tell you that man, not me? There is no better way. If you want to get to the heart of a man, feed him. Feed the brute. Feed the brute, I'm telling you. You can the guy. <laughs> we are no different from the dog in that respect. You know, you throw a bone, throw a piece of bread to the dog, he drags his tail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man, also he doesn't drag his tail, but he is responsive. You feed him. 
<laughs> then I'm suggesting that look, you have a Quran at home. Give him tea, your bhajas and samosas, or some dal and rice, time to eat, eat and give him food to eat. This is the awal sunnah of the Prophet. Did you know that? Awal sunnah. Long before salat, zakat, hajj and so on become far. This is the awal sunnah. Before miswak, I believe in miswak. I'm telling you all, I believe in miswak. Look at 77 year old. I'm telling you, they're sharp like, like anything. If you don't try, don't believe <laughs> me. No, I believe in Miswa. I'm telling you, these are genuine things. These are not fabricated things. <laughs> I believe in Miswa. I believe in beard. Look, I've got it. Or maybe not standard size. But I've got it. <laughs> the awal sunnah of the Prophet. You see, when Allah commanded him to declare his mission, he invited the leaders of the Quraysh for dinner. After dinner he got up to deliver his message. Abu Jahl was in the group. Abu Jahl means <coughs> father of ignorance. Jahal al Kaba. Jahal al Kaba, father of ignorance. He wasn't he wasn't an ignorant fool. He was the shrewdest of the Arabs. He was the cleverest of the Arabs. Abu Jahl, among about half a dozen in the whole of Arabia at that time who could read and write, he was one of those, half a dozen, only one in half a dozen who could read and write. His real title was Abu Hikmah, father of wisdom, Hikmat Kabab. But all his knowledge could not make him to recognize the truth of God. So Abu Nabi said, he's not Abu Hikmah, he's Abu Jahl. So that nickname got stuck onto him, but he's no Jahil. He was the shrewdest of the Arabs. He sensed what this youngster is doing. He's given us a mess of pottage, dal khana kilaya, dal and rice, and now he's going to push things down our throat, his message. So he stood up and he stampeded the kids. Hey, you, you listen to this youngster here, you know, for that mess of pottage, dal khana kilaya, what the hell, come on, come on. He scattered the people, he scattered. All scattered. What does our Nabi Karim Salasar do? He invites the leaders of the Quraysh once more for dinner, minus Abu Jahl. Minus Abu Jahl, I'm asking, how is it that nobody talks about it? Nobody. No Alim, Allama, I'm telling you. I don't know about you. Uh, about your Jama, I don't know. Allah. But I know in my community, no Alim ever talks about this Sunnah. He talks about the beard. You know, that you have such standard size beard, mashallah. And your mustache, you must trim it, not shave it. You know that? You must shave the mustache. Not, I mean, you must trim it, you must not shave it. All that they'll tell you. Miswak is the one, no? One sunnah that you reintroduce, you get the, the sawab of 70 shaheed. You just introduce one thing that the people have forgotten, miswa, you know, the datan, you have forgotten. And then whoever comes along and introduces, look man, there are miswa karo, miswa karo. And you introduce it to you, he gets the sawab of 70 shaheed. Just that. I believe that too. I believe. But man, what about this sunnah? Feeding the people. No. I asked it, uh, my one of my meetings in this area of yours. I said, now tell me, uh, I was addressing girls, ladies only. And I asked the ladies, I said, you tell me why, what, why is nobody talks about it? And the young lady had the answer. I don't know any of you got the answer. <laughs> <laughs> this book is yours. <laughs> yes? Yes, you have forgotten about the... Spiritual, spirituality of Allah, that makes it go to the water. No. It costs money. It costs money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this sunnah costs you money. Give I kill out. Chai pill out. No, it's going to cost you money. That's why nobody talks about it. Because if the Molvi talks, the Sheikh, the Imam, he'll have to practice it. He's got some visitors, you know, and he's talking, talking beautiful things about Islam. It's time to, to go for lunch. And he said, well, look, you, you, you can uh, leave any more to this young fellow here. He said, look, I'm going for lunch. Can you do that? That's behaving like a pig, man. I'm telling you, he said, I'm going for lunch. You know, uh, let this young fellow here. You know, <laughs> he'll keep you busy. <laughs> no, the guy doesn't do that because it's going to cost you money. Feeding is going to cost you money. So that's the thing you don't talk. Beer cost you nothing. Tell you, keep beer. Hmm? Yeah, miswa cost him nothing. Make salad cost you nothing. Yeah, don't eat the pig cost you nothing. But he said, feed the people. It's going to cost you something. <laughs> so, we explain, Sinan, what we do now. Look at this. 
he, when the people come into the masjid, there's always somebody making salat in my masjid. No, it's a big center, Durban, it's a big city. In time, out of time, there's always somebody there. And you see the man making salat, and he goes into the sujood. Man, that is the time you point and say, you know, then the man goes into the sujood, since that. You say, you know, that is how Jesus prayed. So what? My Jesus putting his heads down and putting his bumps up? <laughs> Never. My Jesus praying like that? Huh? Putting the head down and putting the bumps up? Is my Jesus do like that? <laughs> because he has been reading. He has been reading, but he hasn't been studying. This is not only Jesus. Every prophet of God, every prophet of God, I'm telling you now, in your Bible, this is how they pray. Every prophet, no exception. You bring me an exception. I show you every prophet of God, he made the sujood in his prayer. And I quote you from the Old Testament. It reads, And Abraham fell on his face and prayed to God. And I quote you again, And Moses and Aaron fell on their faces and prayed to God. And again, And Joshua fell on his face and prayed to God. When we come to the New Testament, we learn that towards his last days on earth, Jesus Christ, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples. And he said, wait and watch. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God. Oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me, meaning remove the difficulty from me, but not as I will, but as thou wilt. What did he do? He said, wait and watch. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God. I would like to know from you. Ask your visitor, the Christian or the Jew. How does a man fall on his face and pray? Is there another way that you can do besides what the Muslim is doing? Can a circus acrobat do better than that? Man, the guy is searching in his head for another way of making the suju, falling on your face and praying. There isn't. So the guy says, no, man. You people are following the teachings of the prophets. We say, as bad as we are, with all our shortcomings, we are still trying to keep in the footsteps of the prophets. We are not claiming to be an immaculate people, a nation of angels, that we have no black sheep in our midst. We also have our fair share of all the good and the bad that exists in every community. But you will find that the Muslim is more particular in the fulfillment of his religious obligations than any other religious group. After having done something like that, now it's time for lunch. Take him back home. Okay, that's it. And he said, look, I hand you over to this bangi you know, Muara said, you know, and I'm saying, I'm going for lunch. That's behaving like a pig. Don't behave like pigs. I'm telling you. Behave like Muslims. Come, take him home. He says, come, we'll share whatever we have. Or your neighbor, you call him in. You feed him. Give him tea. Give him a bhajaz and samosas. Hmm? And then ask him, have you seen the Quran? He says, no. He says, do you like to have a look at it? Nobody ever says no. It's the nature of man. He wants to know why, man. Inquisitive. You want to know what it's like. What is this Quran like? So take it out. I don't know whether the Qur'an is available. Are they available on the outside? No, choice. This book, the choice is available. Get this Qur'an out. Get them, man, get them. And wallah, the Qur'ans are cheap. We were offering in our meetings in all the other places when the stocks were there. We said, encyclopedia, this encyclopedia, the Qur'an, over 2,000 pages for six pounds. 2,000 pages for six pounds. This measly thing, <laughs> 10 pounds. 244 pages for 10 pounds. The Quran we are offering is a ten, a 6 pounds. And if you buy 2, 5 pounds each. 10 pounds for 2. Means over 4,000 pages you get for 10 pounds. Over 4,000 pages. But the Muslim, I don't know what sickness has got out in him. I don't know what it is. That he finds that is also difficult to shell out. <laughs> it makes me very sad. So, I said, these people show them the Quran. They said, do you know we believe in Jesus? Tell them that we believe in Jesus. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. Don't we? Yes. We say we believe that in his miraculous birth, with many modern day Christians, including the bishops of the Anglican Church, they don't believe. Huh. Not only they don't believe, <laughs> but they say, man, they, they are the most fantastic people, I tell you. The Christians of this country, eh, all over the world, they are the most abominable creatures that I have now come across. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. See, this is what I'm going to show you now. This is from the Sunday Times, our local Sunday paper. Sunday Times. Dated April 16. Easter time. Easter. You know Easter? 
They remind themselves about the death of Christ, that he was crucified. There was a passion play in the Westminster Abbey, the holiest of holy place in Britain. The holiest place like Makkah is to us. What St. Peter's in Rome is to the Catholics. Westminster Abbey is to the Anglican Church. Westminster Abbey. This is where the Queen goes. She is the defender of the faith. And maybe she was there when this passion play, meaning the, 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 the turmoil and the trouble, the trial, the tribulation that Jesus Christ went through, you know, when he was crucified. And while the play is going on in Westminster Abbey, I'm reading now, a play in which Jesus Christ was referred to as a sorry looking bastard. This is the, what they call the God, a sorry looking bastard, the God, this is the God. And in Westminster Abbey, maybe the Queen was there, the defender of the faith, she's there. That sorry looking bastard left some of its Westminster Abbey audience shocked and tearful on Good Friday. The three hour production funded by Methodist, Anglican and Roman Catholic churches, funded by all these people that play. And in that play, this actor is made to say this sorry looking bastard Jesus getting crucified. And so in one scene, an actor remarked to another as they carried the cross into the Abbey, if you drop it, I'll cut your... No, I can't, I can't, I can't. My sisters are listening. I can't, 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 I can't read it. There are sisters in the background. Yes, I can't read that. I'm telling you, I can't read this, man. I can't read this. But during the crucifixion of Christian, Christ was taunted with shouts of, Jew boy, Jew boy, that I can say. They call him Jew boy, Jew boy, the sorry looking bastard. They can call the God, the God. And he said, the playwright Justin Butcher, a, practic a practicing Anglican was unrepentant, saying, you have to convey a degree of violence and humiliation to make this sto story real. To make it look like a real thing, you have to speak words and shit like this, you know, to make people get shocked. To say, oh, what is the thing that the Lord God Jesus went through? This is what they brought religion to. He says, talk to them, man. talk to them. They are hungry. Show them that, look, what we respect and revere Jesus. To us, he's one of the mightiest messengers of God. We love him and his mother, Maryam. And you know, Maryam is mentioned in the Quran. Open the Quran. Birth of Jesus. Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, ayah number 42. Read it, man. Read it to the fellow. Let him listen to Allah's kalam in Arabic. The words of Allah, they have a power, a potency. It shakes up people even if you don't understand a word. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Said, Behold, the angel said, O Mary, in Allah has tafaki, Allah has chosen thee, wa taharaki, and purified thee, wa tafaki, Allah nisayr alameen, chosen thee above the women of all nations. Such an honor is not to be found given to Mary, the mother of Jesus, even in your Bible. Do you know that, sir? Madam, your neighbor, talk to them, your employer, your employee, take them. Do you know, sir, that such an honor is not to be found in the Mary, the mother of Jesus, even in your Bible? She is a woman chosen above the women of all nations. Ya Maryam Uknutili Rabbiki was Judi Varka Imar Rakin. So, O Mary, worship thy Lord devoutly, prostrate thyself and bow down and pray with those who bow down. This is part of the tidings of the things unseen, which Allah says, which we reveal unto thee, O Messenger, our inspiration. Where did Muhammad get all this? They said they copied it from the Jews and the Christians. I said, what is there to copy? What have you got? That Muhammad had to copy. He's an ummi. But even if he was a learned man, what is have you got to copy? Hmm? You have the real diamond. And I was an imitation. How can the imitation diamond be better than your original? Your genuine diamond. How can it be? Our is made of glass. Hmm? Imitation. You got the right real Kohenur. And our is shouting, outshining anything that you have got. How can it be? Unless it's coming from a higher source. Allah says it's from Allah. This is what we are giving. They said, no, no, no. Muhammad wrote it. Muhammad wrote this. I said, all right. For a moment I agree with you. It's not so. This is Allah's kalam. Every word that's uttered was given to him in his mouth to utter those words and he uttered them. And they were preserved for us. <laughs> but for a moment I say, I agree with you. That Muhammad wrote it. I says, now, nah, if Muhammad wrote it, let us have a look at it. Let's see what this man did. I said, you see, we say God told him to write. 
to say what he said. So God still less inspires any one of you. Tells you, say, right, write a book. I want you to write a book. It's going to take you 23 years. That book I want you to write will take you 23 years of your life. You understand? And in that book, I want you to mention only one woman by name. Only one woman by name. Only one woman by name. In the whole encyclopedia, I don't want the mention of more than one woman. Only one woman's name you can mention. Whose name will you mention? Huh? Whose name will you mention? Huh? Why Maria? Huh? Why Amina? It's your mother. Your mother. The answer is your mother. You see? I would mention my if the only woman's name. Give him a book, give him the choice. <laughs> pass it on, pass it on, pass it on. <laughs> you greedy, too greedy. Don't be too greedy. Yeah, pass it, pass it. Naturally, me, I'll mention my mother's name. Or my wife, or my daughter. Not yours. And you my opposition? Why my opposition? You are a Jew. And as a Jew, the whole Jewish nation was looking down upon the Arabs for 3,000 years. Father Abraham, they said, had two wives, Sarah and Hajara. We are the children of Sarah, his legal, legitimate wife. And this Ishmael is the son of Hagar. Hagar is a born woman, a slave woman. Actually, she was a princess of Egypt, but they said she was a slave woman, a born woman. And as such, her children are Hagarines. That's what the Jews call the Arabs, Hagarines. And the religion of the Arabs, they call Hagarism. Hadith. Now, <laughs> look, this man, Muhammad, is honoring a Jewess. Not his own mother, not his wife, not his daughter, his daughter Fatima. We believe that she will be the leader of the women of paradise. But even her name is not mentioned. Do you know that? In the Quran, Fatima is not mentioned, Amina is not mentioned, in Aisha, Khadija, nobody is mentioned except Maria. Why? What kind of a book is this? No, this is not Muhammad's work. You can see this is not his work. This not his work. No human being can do a thing like that. Because this is what he's dictated to. Then His Holiness the Pope, I think we'll end with this, we'll allow you to ask questions. In this book here, he has got a chapter on male. But the name of the chapter is Mother of God. Mother of God. Jesus is God and his mother is the mother of God. Makes sense? Yeah. <laughs> If Jesus is God, then his mother is the mother of God. No? Yes, that's logic. So the title is in this book, Mary, Mary's, chapter one, Mary is mother of God. I'm asking this mother of God, how many times is she mentioned in your Bible? How many times? The guy doesn't know. I'm telling you, even the Pope, he won't know. The bishop, nobody. I'm telling you. I can't, I can't imagine a Christian be able to give that answer. If there's a Christian who can answer that, I have one last book. <laughs> Any Christian, take a guess. How many times is Mary mentioned in the Bible? Anybody? Nothing lost? No, yes. Not at all. Huh? Not at all. No. 46. 46. 46. In the 27 books of the New Testament, the New Testament consists of 27 books. In the first three, she is mentioned 17 times. One cell. Matthew, Mark and Luke, all together got 17 times. In the next 24 books, only once. Total 18. Okay? Remember the figures. In the first three books, she is mentioned 17 times. In the next 24 books, only once of the New Testament. Total 18. In the Quran, a hundred percent more time than in your Bible. And you say, we look down upon them. We are disrespectful to Jesus and his mother. I am telling you a hundred percent more times than in your Bible, in the Quran. To be exact, 32. To be exact, 32. It's almost hundred percent. 18, 32. It should be 36. Hundred percent. I said, I said almost hundred percent, but 32 times. And you say, we are the enemies of Christ. We are the Antichrist. We are the enemies of Maryam. We are the Dajjas. We are the Antichrist. What's wrong with you? How sick can you people get? What is sickness? There's no end to your sickness. Come man, have a look at this book. The respect with which Jesus is spoken of in this Quran. He is called Al-Masih, the Messiah. He is called 
Abdullah, the servant of Allah, is Ruh Allah, the spirit of Allah, Kalim Allah, he is the word of Allah. Shoo. Man, these are the titles that the Quran gives to this God of yours. So he is no God. He is no God. He didn't claim to be God. If he claimed to be God, I say, I'm telling the Christians, you show me in any Bible, any Bible, you've got hundreds of different versions. In any of those versions, you show me, Jesus says, I'm God. I said, I'm prepared to accept it. If Jesus says, worship me, I'm prepared to worship him. Me, me, me. I'm not talking for you people. I have no right to talk to you. I talk for myself. You show me in your Bible, any Bible, Jesus says, I'm God. I'm prepared to accept it. Because I know the man will never lie. That's what I know. One thing about Jesus, he can never lie. If he says, worship me, I'm prepared to worship him. I say, I don't talk for these people. I have no right to talk for you, to commit you to the guillotine, to chop off your head. I said, I'm prepared to have your the head chop off my head. Show me. There is it. Wallah, there is it. So now, learn to talk. Man. Learn to open your mouth. And get these books, the choice. They are available tonight. Five pounds each. And with everyone you buy, you get one free. Give them to your non-Muslim friends. Your neighbors, your brother-in-laws, your sister-in-laws, give them. And your neighbors, your employers, your employees, give them. Buy two at a time, you get four. Buy five, you get ten. For the price of five, you get ten. Buy ten, you get twenty in a box. Take them, man. Give them out. Takbir! 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 Sheikh Ahmed Dida, at the age of 77. Dynamic, motivating, inspiring. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him health and long life. And may Allah bless him and reward him. May he shower his mercy upon him most abundantly for his untiring efforts to promote his deen Islam. Brothers, we now come to the question times. I would like you to please arise and ask a question pertaining to the talk of the day. While you are thinking of the question, there are a couple of announcements. Firstly, there is a van parked right outside the gates, which is a hindrance, an obstacle to all. The registration number is C604 WK. V or Y, it's not quite clear. Please remove it as soon as you can. And give preference to the non-Muslim yes. visitors of questions first. Other cars, the registration numbers are F410NTN, C604WKV, that's the same van, M705POK, E. 747 LSF and lastly F708 RLD. Brothers, as you know, we have guests here from Sailor Colleges. I would like you to please give them preference, preference if they have any questions. And this question and answer session is the most interesting session of Sheikh Ahmadidat's meeting. So I would like you to stay. And I would also like to request you to please exercise patience after the question and answer session has finished because we shall, inshallah, conclude this program with dua, that is supplication. Brothers and sisters, I would also like to take this opportunity of introducing the National Dawah program to you. IPCI on Commentary Road in Small Hill runs a very comprehensive national Dawah program. I would like you to write and be a part of it. It is incumbent, as the Sheikh has pointed out, for us Muslims to spread the message of Islam, to pass the message of Islam. And for this, you need knowledge. Brothers and sisters, this, this book, The Choice, is available today as a one-off offer the normal price is five pounds. Today, you buy one and get the other one free. Buy one, pay five pounds, and get one free. If there are any questions, please arise. 
and pose your questions, share your answers, inshallah. Any questions from the visitors, from the guests? This is the opportunity. Otherwise, please, brothers, if you have any questions, arise and pose your questions. Yes, go ahead, shout. My question is that Muslims and believers, we believe one of the, the belief in believing all the prophets, right from Hazrat Adam alayhi salam of the Prophet Muhammad. And we are also instructed in Quran, that we are not to discriminate between the messengers of God. Why is this then that there is an impression that as if Muslims are in conflict with Jews or with Christians as regard to the prophet of Christianity, Hazrat Isa salam, and Hazrat Musa salam, the, the prophet of Jews. Why, why is this, uh, this feeling and why is this among Muslims, I would say, that as if we are in conflict, uh, as far as the, the Prophet Jesus and Prophet Moses are concerned. Could you elaborate on it? Please? Yes. The question is that though we believe in all the Prophets of Allah, which we do, and we are told that we are not to discriminate between one messenger and another, so, you know, Moses is greater than Jesus, or Jesus is greater than Muhammad, or Muhammad is greater than... No, we are told this is not our business. <coughs> In the sight of Allah, who we love best, most, that's his business. We are not to discriminate between the prophets. And Jesus Christ also told his people, said, uh, judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, ye shall be measured unto you. Don't sit in judgment. Don't start saying who is greater, who is less, that's not your business. We accept them all as Allah's messengers. But how is it, the questioner is asking, that the Christians and the Jews, they take, you know, they take us that we are like their enemies. You see, the reason is that Islam is the only non-Christian faith. Islam is the only non-Christian faith which has come after Christianity. And it claims to correct, complete and supersede Judaism and Christianity. Not only that, it claims, Allah's claim, not me, I'm not claiming. He says, He it is who sent his messenger with guidance, with deen al haq and with the religion of truth, that it may prevail, overcome and supersede every other deen, every other way of life. وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا and Allah is enough as a witness to this fact that is going to make his deen to prevail with you or without you. With you or without you. He can do it kun kun. He can change the whole of mankind. No, no. But he wants to give you and me that privilege, that pleasure of doing the works of the prophets of God and earning a prophet's reward. So he has chosen us to do the job. So we are a challenge. We are a challenge. At every step we are a challenge. You don't know that so many Christians, they stood up and they walked away. This was the time to ask questions. I was telling you people, make room against the wall, let them sit there. They would have walked out in a hurry. But they started walking out, they walked out. Those at the back, they all walked out. Why? This is the time to ask. They say, Mr. D, that wait a minute. You see, Muhammad may be a good man, but you haven't got salvation. You see, Christ died for our sins. Come and talk, man. Talk. But no, they are terrified. I'm telling you, they are terrified. Against haq. You see, when you have the truth, Allah says, بَلْنَقْزِفُ بِالْحَقِّ لَلْبَاطِلِ When truth is heard against falsehood, بَلْنَقْزِفُ بِالْحَقِّ لَلْبَاطِلِ فَيَذْ مَوْهُ فَازَهُ وَزَاكِفُ It knocks out its brains. Light against darkness, it dissipates darkness. Heart against battle, it cracks the skull. And when your skull is cracked, cracked, how do you behave? Like a saint person. You behave like a saint guy. When your brain is cracked. No, this is Islam. You see, we are talking to the people's come. Talk to us. Ya Ahl al-Kitab, Allah says. Ya Ahl al-Kitab, O people of the book, Ta'ala, come. Look, Ta'ala, come. Ila kalimatin sawaim bainana wa bainakum. That we come to common terms as between us and you. Come, let us get into a common platform. This is Allah telling us to tell them, call them. But nobody is calling them. Do you know that? The trouble with us is nobody is calling them. 
I'm asking my Arab brothers in Al Azhar. I'm talking to these people in Al Azhar, the Shahs. You see, how do they respect me? They respect me because I gave battle to that Jalut who swam in America. They saw that. They said, no, this guy is a little David. I'm a Dawood. And that Jalut, I knocked him out. So since then, they have respect for me. Although I don't know Arabic, I'm not a scholar of Allah, I'm a lorry driver who has come to stop talk, I start talking. And you people like, listen to me. And uh, I talk and you people enjoy my talk. And in the process, I think I'm passing on some message to you, which makes me happy that I think you listen to some of my advice. That's all. So I meet the chef of Al-Azhar. And I'm asking them. I said, you read the Quran? You people, you read the Quran? He said, yes. I said, you understand what you read? He said, not like you Hindi, me. You read like a parrot, you don't know what you're reading. I said, no, that is true. That is true. All the non-Arabs, we are 900 million Muslims, non-Arabs. And all of us, we read the Quran without understanding one word. Almost all. You agree? All the non-Arabs, we are in that plight. There have been certain things going on that created this situation that I don't have to explain. So, he says, not like you Hindis, you people read like a parrot and you don't know what you're reading. But I know that I'm a Hindi, means I'm from India. So, he says, no, that is true. But I say, you understand what you read? He said, of course. He says, Allah is telling you. I'm telling them, Allah is telling you. He's telling everybody. He's addressed to the whole of mankind. But since you understand, it's more directed to you. Like somebody shouting in Chinese, it's less you are all Chinese, all, all Chinese. And somebody shouts in Chinese, fire, fire. I'll keep on talking. Do you know that? Yeah, no. I know somebody may be calling his friend, calling his dog, you know. <laughs> but you are bloody fools if you don't react. Do you know that? If your language is shouting fire, fire, and you know, just sit down and listen, and getting entertained by Peter. You're fools, man. <laughs> You ought to react. So I said, now Allah is talking to you, to, to the Arab. In his language. Fain nama, Allah says, Fain nama, yes sir, now we We have sent it, the Quran, down in your own tongue. They have made it for you, easy for you in your own tongue. Allah is telling you, we have made this book, the Quran, easy for you in your own tongue. Tumari zaban kendra, tumari liya asan kardiya. In your own tongue. Huh? For what? He said, little Bashir Abhil Muttaqeen, that you may with it give glad tidings to the Muttaqeen, the God fearing, the upright person. And I'm asking, how many masjids have you got here in the city? One city in the Arab country, I'm asking. He said, 1,000 masjids. So I said, you've got 1,000 imams. He said, yes. Who are they talking to? To the Muttaqeen. Because you go to the masjid, he's talking to you. You go to Juma, he's giving the Fulla talk, because you are going there. You are the muttaki, you are the upright follower. But Allah says, Watun zirabihi qawmul ludda. And a warning to the qawmul ludda. I said, you got a thousand guys, sheikhs and imams and alims, they're talking to the muttaki, to the qawmul ludda, the upright person. Is there one in the thousand who's talking to the qawmul ludda? He says, no. As a 160 million Arab, in the 160 million, have you got one who's talking to the qawmul ludda? He says, no. This Shaykh of Allah said, I'm asking them, so Allah is telling you, قُلْ يَا أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ لَا تَغْلُوا فِي دِينَ O people of the book, don't go to extremes in your religion. With the regards to Jesus, the Jews, they say he's the bastard child of Mary. In the Jewish Talmud, they say a Roman soldier by the name of Pandera, he raped Mary, and this bastard child is given over as the son of God. The Christians say because there was no father, his father is God. They're both going to extremes. So Allah is telling you, as Tell them, Ya Ahlul Kitab, La Taqdu Fi Din. Don't go to extremes in your religion. Wala taqul wa la illa al-haq. And don't say anything about Allah except the truth. Inna mal Masih, most certainly the Messiah, translated Christ. Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus son of Mary, Rasulullah, is the messenger of Allah. Wa kalimatu, when a word proceeding from him. Al-Kaha ila Maryam wa ruhum minhu. Which he bestowed upon Mary and a spirit proceeding from him. Fa'aminu billahi wa rusulihi. So believe in Allah, his messenger, Jesus. I'm asking, are you telling this to the Christians? He says, no. It's Allah is telling you, Wala taqulu thalasa. Don't say Trinity. I say, any of you believe in Trinity? No. So who is Allah talking to? Talking to the world? No. Through the Imam, Allah is giving you instructions. Those who say thalasa, 
Don't tell them, Wala taqulu salas. Don't say trinity. It's a message given to us through the Imam that we may go and do the job. I said, is there? Are they? Are you giving this message to the Christian? Do, what, are you telling them? Wala taqulu He says, no. So Allah said, لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهُ مَسِيُّ بِنِ مَرْيَمُ Anyone who says that Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, is God, is making kufr, is an act of blasphemy, treason against Allah. وقال المسيح that Masih said Ya Bani Israel O children of Israel La Allah Worship Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum Who is my Lord and your Lord Inna Bubu Yushrik Billah Whoever will associate anyone with Allah Fakad Haram Allah Jal Jannah Allah will make Jannah Haram Wa Ma'abu Naar And the fire of hell will be the dwelling place Wa Ma'alid Zalimina Min Ansar And for the wrong will be no one to hell Are you telling them that? So no So Allah is telling you Qul Say Ya Ahl Al-Kitab Ta'ala I said you understand Ta'ala I'm asking the Arabs, you understand Ta'ala? He said, yes. Who is Ta'ala? He says, come. Are you calling them? Are you calling them? He says, no. I said, how do you know why? No. Then you tell Allah is talking to you in your language. In your language, you Arabs. We Hindus, we've got a good excuse. We don't understand. You Allah forgive us. <laughs> That's not our question. <laughs> we've got a good excuse. I'm telling you. <laughs> but you Arabs, you've got no chance. You've got no hope. I'm telling you, you are in deep waters. <laughs> so, we are a challenge. At every step you are a challenge. So that's the idea. The, the answer is, Allah says, وَلَن تَرْدَى أَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَن نَصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِيَ مِلَّةً That the Jews and the Christians will never, never be satisfied with you. Do you believe what Allah is telling you? He is telling you they'll never, never, learn is a double negative. Most certainly not. They'll never be satisfied with you unless you follow the bread of religion. Go and join the church if you want peace. Give the Jews whatever they want, if you want peace. Otherwise, there's no hope for you, there's no peace for you. Unless you change them or you get changed. You can't sit on the fence. We are sitting on the fence. All of us, we are sitting on the fence. As you're talking like a very monkey, man. This is when everything fails. You try and harm, they're going to fight you, they're going to kill you. He's swearing you, abusing you. Then you say, When an ignorant who addresses you arrogantly, Salah says, tell you peace. You go your way, I go my way. That is the last resort. You don't start with that. But we are all starting with that. Where are we supposed to end with the worst criminal? That's how you start. No, no, you end that. That's the ending. When the guys out to fight you, sway you, abuse you, abuse the Prophet, abuse the Quran, and you know it comes to the blows and you might not come out well. So then the best thing is to say, Ta-da. <laughs> That's them. <laughs> right, any other question? Yes, my son. I'm sorry. There was an article recently in a bit of the Independent, uh, Dr. Michael or something. He's a Pakistani by birth. Uh, he's from Rochester now. Right, right. And he said it's time for a uh, to criticize the Quran, look at it from a literary point of view. Right. Now, what I'd like to ask you is. Why are Christians not concerned with the authenticity of their own books? For example, the, the um, Old Testament, how the scriptures have perished, when the Jerusalem was sacked, many versions of the New Testament the Christians themselves go to have. Why is it they, they don't want to know about these and you know, they're so concerned about us? Could you answer my question? No, no, you see, the trouble is with us. We should be doing our job. We are not being here, we are not de- doing it even in the Arab countries. There are 15 million Egyptian Christians. Do you know that? 15 million in Egypt. There are millions in the Lebanon, in Jordan. Then there are Arabs. You got no language problem. Here, most of us coming from overseas, your fathers, you know, the English, you know, poor fathers, you know, you know, you can't open your mouth. You don't know what to talk. But now. So the Arab, he is not talking. For 1,400 years he hasn't talked. No, it's all of us. We must all wake up. All must wake up. And you do your duty. You do this little job. Invite the people. Forget that Michael Nazir Ali. You know, he's a Pakistani. A murtad. His father was a murtad. And he's his child. And he's qualified. He's a bishop. Yeah? Inshallah we'll try and, and catch him fish. We will be writing to him. He said, Nandu, let's have a dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> in the Royal Albert Hall or in the NEC, in the NEC. We have a dialogue. We no no we suggest to him, look, we at our expense we'll call up a meeting. The concept of God in Islam and Christianity. No fight, no war. 
Come, you come along and tell us, you know, what is your concept of God, and uh, we will say, what is our concept of God, and leave it to the people to decide which one they want to buy. They want to buy your concept or buy our concept. That's all. No debate, no boxing match. Just come along and talk, man. We'll see what happens. Next one. Yes, my brother. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, my mother's family are Jewish. And my father's family are Christian. So I shall come to the Mashallah, Mashallah. The question I want to put is this. The four people here, the problem of Christians. Right. But in reality, the Christian are only the foot soldiers of the Jews. They are the against them, the foot soldiers of the Jews right. against the Muslims. True, right. true, true, true. I mean, we have the problems here from cellular colleges. Right. You only have to go to cellular colleges and see the Judaic Encyclopedia. Uh -huh. The Judaic, page 617 of the Gentiles. Uh -huh. And what does it say? Baba Shaboya Goyim Haram. Even the best amongst the Gentiles must be killed. Uh -huh. Not that they should be tolerated. No, no. Not that they should be, they must be killed. Right. And they say in their little part, just like they say in the Torah, about Miriam and about Hagar and about this, that she was a bondswoman, she was a slave, in fact right. we know what right. she was. Right. They just said lie. Right. Now that being the case, they would have wrote, Papa Shaboya going, not a going, a Roman harot, the best amongst the Romans should be killed because ah. they tortured him. Right. Right. Now, but the agenda is something totally different. Right. And the problem, as you said, is that the Prophet Muhammad has said quite clearly, Study your enemy, to understand your enemy, only then can you defeat your enemy. True. And True. we do not study them, but they no. have all colleges in every right, city right, studying right, us. Right. Study your colleges came about as a Methodist missionary college in this city in the 18th century to send missionaries to Muslims to make them into Christians. And yet we send our children there to study. And we wonder why their brains come out confused. Because they come out to the concept that they are inferior when we are superior to this system and this way of life. And that being the case, my brother, I'd like to ask you the question, uh -huh. and granted, <laughs> I'd like to ask you the question in this. Why is it we are not studying them, and why are they so busy studying us? We do not study their Torah, and especially the Jews do not follow the Torah anymore. True. These Jews that we call the European Jews are right. right. when they are not Jews, they're not even from Bani Israel, right. they're not Semitic, they're right. in the tribe of Khazar. Uh -huh. In fact, they study the Talmud, which is a rabbi's interpretation, which right. is a complete evil. Right. We do not even know the Torah, right. the Talmud, the Kabbalah, right. Right. or even the Angels, right. 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 but they know our book. And right. they spend millions of dollars right. every year attacking us, but we do not know them. <coughs> Until we understand them, we cannot defeat them, because they will know more about us than we know about them. True. True. And why is it that our scholars, our alums, our ulama, are not warning us of this danger when we live amongst them and we do nothing even to take Islam to them. True, true. And in fact, groups on this country that said to me and people like me that were born, well, we handed them with one Muslim for our families that is away from Islam, that we do not take it to you until we make them with Muslims perfect. I'm not going to mention the group, but this is a nonsense because the Prophet Muhammad said so quite clearly, at the Hajj, Go out and propagate Islam. Go out and take Islam to the true, world. True. And yet today, in this country, the Asian community are opposed to this, almost totally, except for small groups. And true. until that happens, their situation in this country is not safe. Imam Sarah Fahaj, whom you know from the state, said, we are the secret weapon in the heart of the Quran. This is the first time in the history of the world that sizable numbers of Muslims are in the West. So much so that they have this wood, this boogie actually made a problem for Lord Justice Scott on the Arms of Iraq conference at our judgment against this British government for supplying Saddam Hussein with uh, guns. Because his daughter and his son both became Muslims and they said the judge might now be biased. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we not warning our own people against the evil that is within our own communities, for we are a minority here. Inshallah, we will be the majority, but we can only be the majority when we make their children Muslims. Inshallah. Inshallah. No, it's all left to us, my brother. Don't wait on the sheikhs and the imams. Don't wait on the alims. Because they are the children of their training. You see, the Americans have a saying, garbage in, garbage out. Whatever joke with Busa Faraga, Busa Niklega. Whatever sawdust goes in, the same sawdust comes out. So it's the training. They are not, they are trained. 
to mind their own business. They are trained, they are trained to say, Lakum deen, Lakum They are trained to say, you go your way, I go my way. They are trained that way. You see, when Allah says, come man, call them, call them, talk to them. وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِ Go and do jihad as you ought to do jihad. وَاسْتَبَعَكُمْ He has chosen you for this. وَسَمَّكُمْ مُسْلِمِينَ He has named you Muslims. مِنْ قَبْلُ وَفِي حَاذَا Before and now, you are called Muslims. لِيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْكُمْ And he has made the Rasul a witness over you. وَتَكُونُوا And the whole lot of you. No exception. وَتَكُونُوا and the whole lot of you, Shuhadal and Nas, a witness to mankind. I'm asking, are we a witness to mankind? Are we? You're not. No, because the Alim is not bringing your attention to it. The Alim, we should tell you, from the member, you're going to Dawa, that lady working for you, go and tell her about Islam, that guy who's doing the garden for you, or you working for him, go and tell him, and invite him home and talk to him. The Alim, because he's not talking from the member, you are not doing it. Fellow like me, said, that's my gym business, that's my job. I'm a paid servant of the IPCI in Durban. So I'm talking all this because I'm paid. I said, you, my brother, sheikhs and imams, Alim and Allah, Mazhar Al-Azhar, and of Umul Pura University, and Medina University, man, that something has gone wrong. And you are Darul Ulum Durban, and you are Darul Ulum Jalalabad, and you are Darul Ulum Rawal Pindi. The whole lot of us, we are like sheep and goats, you know, with like don't you with the blinkers on. Yes, this is my new business. Hamara Chikana Nehe, we are not perfect. Now, my dear brothers, I know. Look, you are hungry, you are hungry to listen, and I am hungry to talk, but then I can see that uncomfortable position in which you are seated for so long. I think every good thing has to come to an end. And tomorrow, six o'clock, we are leaving for London to catch our connecting flight to Abu Dhabi. So you will please, please forgive us. Huh? No, no. That's another one there. At least one. What do you want to ask? I just, I, I only want to ask. Right, right. Yours is the last. Yours is the last. I only want to ask. Would Mary a Jew? Would Mary a Jew? Would Mary a Jew? Mary a Jew. Mary a Jew. Oh, Mary a Jew. Yes. Yes. So, so what about that? Oh, yes, she was a Jew. Jesus is a Jew. And his mother is a Jew. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I've been saying the Quran that um, he was not the Jew in the Lord, but still. Oh, no, no, no. Ibrahim said, Ma'kana Ibrahim a Yehudiyam wa la That is Ibrahim. He was long before Moses was born and long before Jesus was born. So he couldn't be a Jew or a Christian. That's Ibrahim a.s. Fakhul Dawah Mahdi. Alhamdulillah. Please remain seated, my dear brothers, because we shall conclude this program with the dua, with the supplication. Please do exercise patience for a few minutes longer. Jazakallah, shukran, you are Sheikh, for your guidance and your direction. Brothers and sisters, it's a message for us. Sheikh wants us to acute ourselves, ourselves with knowledge and pass it on. There are books here outside. They will help you to acquire that knowledge. And when you acquire that knowledge and talk to others, you will find talking to them is also a reminder to you yourself also. You will find that during the course of time, it will change your life. And it will also influence and affect your family life as well. And inshallah, there will be Allah's blessing upon you. And there will be fruits before you that you will feel, that you will feel multiplying day by day, inshallah. I would now like to request our Sheikh to please come forward and conclude this program in the world. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات 
انك مجيب الدعوات انك على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد وال محمد وعجل فرجهم واحشنا معهم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورايت الناس يدخلون في دين الله افواجا فصبح بحمد ربك واستغفر انه كان توابا صدق الله العلي العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته